Ellis, was there any sort of hung, uh, hangover from from yesterday's game in terms of uh, just the mood? Because when I went, on, I went, I did, you know, I went on social media. I, did, I was doing stuff for O2. I interviewed you, and I was like, I was upbeat because I take an objective point of view. You know, did we play the best? No. Was it pretty? No. You know, like I said, to you, I thought you did really well. I thought Billy V stood out. I thought some guy. I thought Max Mayhem was brilliant when he came out. Billy V's made it into our in, into our team in a week, and we, you know, and so did yourself. We talked about it, but there was a lot of negativity, a lot of negativity. You know, the fact that France had put out a third string side, people were going, it's not good enough, it's not this. Does that seep in? Because I, if I hadn't gone well, I'd find it hard uh, those nights after the game to, to really enjoy it. Or was it the fact that it was Jamie Stagby that you all had to brush it to one side anyway? For me, definitely. I, I don't have any hangover from the game in terms of holding on to it. If you lose, completely different story, of course. But we, we just want silverware, and that's what we decided to do. I think you got to appreciate, and the boss summed it up well for us, that where rugby's at right now, the way to win a game is play the way we're playing. And that proves in the pudding, you know? Like, we're, we're winning, so that's how you play rugby at the moment. The best teams in the world are winning games, that's how they're playing rugby. Whether you think it or not, they might have a few absolute rich their players, but that is how they're winning, by kicking and, and doing well in the kick battle. And he, he actually told us a story about the Brums in, in 2000 when they were doing all this running rugby and then they came to a final against, I think it was Crusaders. And they lost the final 20 points to 19. And he said, we were playing this brand of rugby, but if we would have kicked the ball, we would have won. And that's the one anyone ever cares about is winning. Do you know what I mean? Like people are saying now, fucking hell, they're playing such a boring brand of rugby. All the media keep harping on the same old faces, by the way, as well. Proper need to pack it in. <laughs> but do, you want to go any, do you want to go any further with that? Or should we can't just... be <laughs> fucked. But um, they, they all say, oh, they're, just, they're so boring, they're kicking it. They don't know how to attack. It's like, hang on a minute, we're, we're winning. Like, what else do you want? No one gives a fuck about how you play didn't, it. Didn't South Africa win a World Cup off the back of not going off scripts the entire time, apart from <laughs> in the last part of the final when it was already clinched and they had some individual brilliances when England was sort of had fallen apart. Like, this is the bit I don't get, is that we're all striving for this unbelievable game of rugby. Yeah. We, you know, we don't go and practice just dullness. We want to have fun. Boys are playing ball in hand. But the point is that it's about winning. And I know the purists. And listen, you've always got to, like with the rugby media and the journalists, you've got to have a difference of opinion because that's what makes the world go round. Like we can't all have common common sense or we can't all agree. But the fact of the matter is, that's this is how you win, this is how you win rugby at the moment. Don't, you know, don't blame anyone because what would be better? We didn't do what we did when Wasps left from Adams Park to Coventry and they ran out of money. Some old players and old coaches and old fans were like, well. If they can't afford it, you know, let's just let the club fold, slip down four divisions and just play good old club rugby. It's like, well, no, or we could do that, or we could move to Coventry and have a new stadium. Like, well, it's not the same. It's like, okay, but we're just probably going to do that. And it's the same way as like, <laughs> yeah, we could try to play that game of rugby that's really impossible because there's 14 men on their field and we can have a good go doing it. Like, you could be like Wales. You can have <laughs> most offloads, most, uh, you know, most passes, but you can also win fuck all if you'd like if you'd like to do that. And, and I guarantee if you did, they'd be like, well, you know, look at South Africa. They, you know, they cook, they kick, they play the territory. It's all Crusaders have ever done. And they've won every, you know, what are they on that eight, eight in back to back or something? Something like that, yeah. I mean, we're, we're by no means <clears throat> finished products. We're not trying, I'm not trying to say that. It's just at the moment, this is the, the demands of the game. It's just the way you have to play to win rugby games. Do you feel you're playing boring rugby? I mean, do you feel you're bored by. <sighs> By what you're doing or not? When, you, when you roll back you, the seats. I do not get bored of winning. I don't think <laughs> do you know answer. what I mean? It's, it's, it's literally that's the only... your first that's your first t shirt. That is gonna be the first <laughs> I don't think anyone shirt. does, you know, like who gets bored of trophies? Like that's no one. That's what you set out to do. You set out to win, and if that's what you gotta do, then that's what you gotta do. Oh, and when it's get... when it's thirty degrees and the game allows us to play fast flow and rugby and it's on and there's not 14 people on their feet and you're not getting belted by a 20 stone bloke every time you run into because defence is so good at the moment as well so you yeah. have to kick it over the head to turn and make them out of breath so then you could dent the line you know Oi, what like is it? I said they just don't get it I don't know what's the, what's the expression is it from you know um, Sean Connery God rest his soul in the rock and he's like <laughs> and he's like you know purist playing open rugby you know don't go home and fuck the prom, prom queen you know ruthless <laughs> rugby players get the silverware get to fuck the prom queen and go home and laugh about it I mean it's like 
I remember when I first started DJing. So that's exactly what Sean said. But we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> it's not a bad. It's not. He says you're like 46, something. mate. I haven't watched the same films as you either. Where have you quoted that from? You haven't seen The Rock with with I've um, seen the Rock. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, he basically Bob, says Bob something about Rock, winners. He I said, thought you were about The Rock, the wrestler. No, no. Sean Connery in The you Rock said says <laughs> says win, says losers says losers do this, winners go home and fuck the prom green. I'm basically, I've converted that very cleverly to imply <laughs> that if you're a purist and you want to, you know, play expansive rugby, you ain't going to win. Winners do what we're doing and they go home and fuck the prom king while those people haven't even got out of bed. But I'll give you a better analogy. It's when I started DJ, this guy, asked me what, <laughs> what, 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 music, what music I was into, what music I was into genuinely. This was about, about 10 years ago and I liked EDM. I used to go to Tomorrowland and all these other places. And I said, well, actually, do you know what? I quite like Calvin Harris and Tiesto. And a bloke was like, oh, mate. He gave me something. He was like, oh, they're not real DJs. And in my head, I was like, mate, the dude's made 80 million quid a year. Like, he, like do you think he's worried that you don't think he's a purist? Think he's it's a good like DJ, that. yeah. Yeah, he's left the building while you're still trying to pull your vinyl records out going, I'm doing it properly. It's like, mate, nobody cares. Fuck off. Yeah, that's it's a better analogy. Thing that's a much better analogy. Thank you. Analogy. Thank you. But go and watch the rock again. You'll see what I mean. Losers <laughs> always complain about doing their best while winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Did, I think, Alice, just one question. Sorry, there is one that I think that people really want to know, right? And this is this is something because don't want to be too rugby nausy. Is was there any element of you boys taking these guys not not seriously enough because it was made abundantly clear that they were a bit of a Fisher Price side or a perceived Fisher Price side. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always a danger of that, and no matter if you if you sort of try to steer away from it or not, I think there's always uh, always going to be that danger of going into the game thinking, oh, they can't put the best team out. But then being French, you also have to have in the back of your mind they can pull anything off. And the players in that team were class, like they all international caliber yeah. players. Um, like you got Racco on the wing. Do you know what I mean? I don't think that's a third team for me, anyway. So we, we were we were very aware of the dangers. I think, to be honest, they just came out of the blocks a bit quicker than us um, in the first half. That unrivaled, weren't they? We were just second best of everything, and then in the second half, we solved the problems. And uh, at no point we've come so far as a team because at no point in that game did we genuinely look at each other and think we we're going to lose. 